Welcome to our second video on pointers. Uh, we're going to continue on today by working with pointers, specifically now in the context of arrays. All of the pointer exercises we've done so far just refer to individual data values. But what happens when arrays get involved? Well, things get a little more complicated. So we've saved all of these examples for this video. Now, uh, starting with our first exercise, we're going to make an array of integers, then use a pointer p that points to a number in the middle of the array. And we'll see what happens if we output p of x for different values of x, x, x plus 1, x minus 1, and so on. And we'll try moving p around and see what happens on Python Tutor. So let's give this a shot. Um, now, I think I will code all this actually on Python Tutor today. And the reason for that is because I really want to see what's actually happening. Um, as I um, as I manipulate this data. So everything here is going to be through Python Tutor. I need to make sure I include IO stream and then I'm using namespace std. Okay, we're going to make an array of values. My array 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, just for fun. Uh, and we're going to make a pointer, p1. Uh, and we're going to point it at, uh, so it said point it at the middle of the array. So let's point it at the address of my array, let's say three. Also, just so we don't mix up the uh, indices and the values, I'm actually gonna make these bigger numbers just so that there's no confusion here. So let's start by seeing what this does and then we can move on from there. Okay, so I have my array over here, which has 10 to 50, and my pointer here, you can see, has a nice little arrow, uh, which is going to follow directly to the third index, which is number 40. So, okay, now I have a pointer that points here. What can I do with that? Well, I can obviously reference that number itself. I can use the dereferencing operator like we did last time if I want to change the value or access it. What happens if I want to move around this array? Well, let's uh, try a few things. So first off, Let's try um, outputting what's at P1 uh, and what's at um, P1 plus 1, just for fun. Let's see what happens. Value. What's going to output? Look at that. Outputs 40 and 50. Now, here's something to note. The value that's stored in P1, uh, let's, let's actually output it so we can talk about it. Uh, so let's output uh, P1. Just so it's there. It's always kind of slow to run this visualizer, unfortunately, but yeah. So. P1 has this value, FFF, BCC. When I print out what's at this address, it's 40, because that's what's actually there. Um, if I add one to this number, what do I get? Well, adding one to C sounds like it's kind of hard to do, but it turns out because C++ knows what I intend to do, when I do P1 plus one, it actually does something slightly different. Uh, and I think our lab exercise will go over exactly what, that, what that's about. Um, but for now, it suffices to say that when I increment my pointer by one, I'm actually incrementing this index over here. So this arrow is actually going to reference this. Uh, and I can actually do that directly by saying, let's have um, p1 uh, plus plus, just increment it and see what that does. Now, um, let's have another pointer, star p2, and that'll take the address of the element at index 1, the 20. What happens if I output p2 of 2? And we'll see. Okay, here we go. Uh, I think I have to zoom this out a little bit just so that I can get everything in my window. Okay. So, we start off, we have an array. We have our pointer. The address of that is what we have before. We print out 40 and 50. If I increment P1, 
look what happened to the arrow. It now moved over to here. So we're now in the next address in memory, and this is an important point. All of these elements in this array are stored in the computer in sequence, meaning that the address of each one comes immediately after the other one. They're all next to each other, and that means that when I increment the value of P1, what I'm doing is I'm saying, go to the next index of the array that you're working on. And now I'm pointing at a different element. Here is P2. P2 points to the 20 right now, and I'm going to output P2 of 2. What the heck is this going to do? Well, 40. Well, what happened there? Let's think about it for a second. What's going on? Well, in the computer, my array is actually secretly kind of a pointer in a sense, and it points to the very first element of its own piece of data. It points to the zeroth element. If I put my array of one or of two or so on, it's, what that's telling C++ is, hey, go to that index element of the array that you're in and give me back the data. Now, P2 is a pointer and it works just the same way. If I did P2 of zero, what, it, what would it print out? It would actually print out 20 because that's what is being pointed to by this pointer to an array. It's the exact same thing that would be printed out if I printed um, asterisk P2. Now. When I, do, uh, when I try to output P2 of 2, what is this telling the computer? Well, what it's telling the computer is P2 references an array, so go to that array, find the element two spaces after the first one, and give me that. Well, what is the first one? P2 doesn't know the whole size of this array. All it knows is that it, it is a pointer to a data value, uh, and presumably if we're using these square brackets, that means this is part of an array, so I can move through one as you normally would. What happens when I move two spaces forward from this 20? One, two, I end up where the 40 is, and that's why this gets printed out. So very useful to do a little bit of practice with these kinds of exercises so you can see exactly what the computer is doing, and that way this kind of stuff is gonna be much more predictable. Okay, so that's our first exercise. Let's move on to the second one. Okay. Um, yeah, and you can probably guess what would happen if you try putting in different numbers. Anyway, uh, write a function that returns a pointer to the maximum value of an unsorted array of doubles. Do not sort the array. All right, let's do that. A pointer to the maximum of an unsorted array of doubles. All right, well, we're going to write a little algorithm to solve this problem. First off, we're going to need a double array. Let's do five, just for fun. Uh, let's do, you know, 10.1. Uh, 20.5, 15.7, point 199.4, and 6.6. 6. Just some random numbers in there. Okay, clearly there's one biggest number. Now I need to figure out how to get that. So uh, I'm going to need to have a um, max, which is going to start out as zero. I'm trying to get the biggest one. Um, uh, this is something also to be very careful about, is because I know my um, array contains all positive numbers, I know that zero is going to be smaller than any of them. But if you're working with an array that might have negative numbers, you may need to change this value to something else. Um, potentially you could actually consider doing, maybe this is a bit more generic and we'll go with this actually. Let's assume the maximum is um, my array zero. So that way I know that uh, the biggest number is um, like every number is going to be either, um, like this is a possibility for what the answer could be, and then I can compare this to everything else and find the actual number that I'm looking for. So, um, okay, I have a potential maximum, I have my array, I need a, a function that's going to return a pointer to the maximum value of that array. So let's call a function, and we're not going to sort it. I'm going to call a function, and we're going to call it um, get max. Uh, I guess we'll assign this to a um, variable. So it's a double pointer, um, max pointer. I'm going to run our get max function on my array. Okay, so I need a double star function called get max, and it's going to take an int uh, array. I think this is the right format. I may have to double check this. Okay, um, this I need over here actually because it doesn't really do me any good inside of the main function, but it's much more useful over here. Now, um, I want to go through equals zero 
i less than 5, i plus plus. Again, I'm cheating a little bit here in that I know the array has five elements, so that helps me a fair bit. Um, okay. Uh, I guess I can start from element 1 because I've already checked element 0 to see what the maximum is there. If, um, sorry, not my array, it should be array. I'm making all kinds of typos today. Uh, if array i is bigger than the maximum, then that should be our new maximum. So, uh, and we also need to make sure we're going to return a pointer. So let's set up a pointer that we can return. Double max pointer is going to be. Um, and here's a little trick you can do. You can actually just do array. I don't have to put in the ampersand here because, if you remember from before, array actually just refers to the location in memory where all my data is stored. So it is an address, which means I can just take it directly. Now, um, now I, the, I'm pretty sure this will work. We'll, we'll see if uh, it lets me compile. Now, uh, if the next item I find is actually bigger than the maximum, then I have a new maximum to consider. So the maximum should now be array i and the maximum pointer should be um, the address of array i. Uh, and there's actually another way I can write this, which is array plus i. Um, let's go with the first one for now. Uh, and in fact, let's do the uh, like the uh, more intuitive way of doing this at first, and then we'll try making the changes after, just so you can see that it's not going to make any difference. Okay, so this should go through and figure out what our actual maximum is, and then once we have that, then we can return max pointer. Done. Okay. Let's run this, see what happens. Did I make a typo? We're going to find out. I did. Um, oh, I may have called it an int array, but it should be a double array. There we go. Okay, that was my only typo. That's good. All right, I'm gonna populate my little array. There's some numbers. We're going to run git max. We have our array here. And now look at this. The value of array is actually just a pointer to the array from my original code. So later on, we'll actually find that I could just copy the value of array because it's an address into my max pointer. Um, now, the line that I run is going to um, just make max pointer be this address. But instead of doing this address, I can also just copy the pointer that already points there, save myself some time. Okay, now I need to go through and find the real maximum. So. Uh, the first contender is 20.5, that is bigger, so we'll shift the new max pointer. The next contender is 15, but that's too small. The next one is 199, that's definitely a contender, so we'll point to that. And that is actually the biggest one, so we will return it. And when we're done, our max pointer points to the biggest element. So, that all worked, that's all good. Um, but just for fun, let's make those changes I talked about before. Instead of using the address of the first element of the array, I can actually just use the array because the array is a pointer to the data in my computer. Similarly, for max pointers assignment here, rather than using the address of the ith element of the array, it's kind of annoying, right? Just take the array and add i. Remember, array is an address, so if I take the address and I add i to it, I'm just shifting that many spaces through the computer. So let's try this out again and see if there's any changes or if it does the exact same thing. So once again, we start out as usual and now, does this change? Nope. The first thing we did, exactly the same. Max pointer still points to the same thing, even though I just assigned it array. So all I did was point my pointer to the same place that this array is referring to, which is exactly what I want. Now, what happens when I find a new maximum, the 20.5? Can I add i to my array and point to the right place? Yep, and there it is. All I did was I took the value of the pointer, which is an address, and I added one to it, which push, pushes me to the next element of the array. And then later when I get to 199, I'm going to take my pointer and I'm going to make it equal to the array where it is plus three. So I'm going to go one, two, three steps and kaboom, I'm in the right spot. All right. So 
Um, saves me a bit of time in coding, because now I don't have to worry about grabbing addresses using the ampersand. I can actually just use the value of the array, um, because that is a pointer itself. Just makes things a lot easier, I think, in my opinion. Okay, so that was all for that exercise, and now we can move on to the next one. All right. Write a function that takes a string my string and a character pointer my character pointer as parameters. It should return a new pointer that points to the first appearance of my care pointer's character in my string. That is a, a wild one. So let's break this down one step at a time. We're making a function. It's going to return a pointer, and the pointer is going to point to a character. So that means it has to return a character pointer. That's step one. Let's start with that, and we'll worry about the rest of what this is asking later. So I have a function. It's going to return a character pointer. Um, and it's going to point to the first appearance of a character. So let's call it first appearance. Parameters is going to be a string my string. So it should include string just in case. And a character pointer my care pointer. So character pointer my care pointer. And what this is supposed to do is it's supposed to go and find the first appearance of the character referenced by this pointer in the string and return that pointer. So first let's make these two things. So we'll make the string string is let's just make it my name for fun. Uh, actually it's a bit long. We'll just do my first name. Uh, and we're going to have um, character, let's say we want to look for i, um, we'll call it i as it sounds, we'll make it i, and we're going to have a pointer, my character pointer, which refers to i. So my character pointer is pointing here, so that's the character I want to be looking for in this function. Okay, and then I'm going to set another character pointer to be the first appearance in my string of the point the value from my character pointer. Okay, so this is my main function all done. Now I'm, I've set up a string, it's my name. I've set up a character I want to look for, it's the letter I. I've set a, oh sorry, it should be an I. There we go. This is probably confusing. Let's do a, let's do search target. Make a little more <laughs> uh, good variable names. I think i is probably a terrible variable name, but search target makes it a little clearer. So my character pointer has the address of the search target, which is the letter i, and the result is going to be me calling my first appearance function with my string and my character pointer. Now, in here, I need to go find that first occurrence. So um, I need to first set up a character pointer, which is going to be the result. And now for uh, i is 0, i is less than my string dot length, i plus plus. This is probably the reason I need to import string so I can actually access its length. Um, if my string of i is, and now I need to grab the character referred to by my pointer, so I need to take my character pointer and I need to find the character that I get from it, which is using the dereferencing operator to go follow the arrow from my character pointer and get that letter. So I have that letter, I compare it to where I'm right now, and if they are a match, then not only have I found it, but um, uh, in fact, I don't even need a variable for this actually, because I can do this all in one line, and let's do that. Uh, no, actually I can't because it's possible the, the character doesn't show up. So we're going to need to still have this. Um, if I find the character I'm looking for, then I can return um, I guess we'll, we'll set result to be the um, to be my now here's I think where you have to be careful because although a string is a, an array of characters, I don't think C++ will be happy if I try to do my string plus i. I think it will be kind of mad. I'll give it a shot, but I don't think it will work. We'll see, maybe I'm wrong. Um, 
So that's going to be my result, and then I'm going to uh, return result. And I'll return result down here if I don't find anything. Now, here is what I think will happen, is I think this will complain and say you can't add an integer to a, to a string, which is probably true. Um, but it might let me, it's hard to say. Yeah, okay, so it's, it doesn't know how to do that. Even though my string is an array of characters, C++ doesn't know how to add an integer to a string. It's a little confusing. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go find the ith character of the string and then take the address. Uh, yeah. So unlike our, um, oh, and this, uh, this quite unfortunately has a very poor um, interface for showing what strings look like, quite unfortunately, because strings are a very complicated thing in C++. It's the reason we didn't actually introduce them until about halfway through the course. Now, um, my string, <laughs> the whole thing is just like kaput. It doesn't really know how to, <laughs> how to represent a string, unfortunately. Um, okay, so I'm looking for i. My character pointer is going to point here, so that's what I'm looking for, and I'm going to call my function with the string and um, and the search target. So, yeah, clearly this is already like having some issues because it couldn't, it doesn't know how to have my string included in here. <laughs> Uh, quite unfortunate, I think. So sometimes Python Tutor doesn't always do what we want. Okay, um, M is not going to match. I is going to match, so we're going to set our result to, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, a little poop emoji because it can't figure out exactly how to represent this. But you can hopefully trust it's doing what you're looking for, and then it does return the result. And it ends up with the, the little poop thing. Um, sadly, uh, you know, Python Tutor and strings in C++, not best friends, so you may have to be careful if these are the kinds of exercises you're doing, but uh, in the end we still managed to get the pointer that does reference the string over here, and it's pointing to, assuming this was working properly, um, the letter i. Uh, and we can actually just verify that in our main function by outputting um, what's at the result just so we can be sure that it actually is pointing at i and not something else. So we run through everything at the very end of the day. The thing that it outputs is an error. <laughs> uh, invalid read of size one. Please fix your code. <laughs> Clearly it wasn't happy about that. Um, hmm. I know it's pointing to the right character, it's just very, very unhappy about it. What if I do... Um, if I try printf, set a curiosity, will it, will it accept this or will it just be angry? No, it's not okay with that. I think the reason is because I'm trying to print a character, um, but it wants a string, so it's not quite happy. Um, it's okay, we can still do another, we can still make another attempt at this, which is if uh, result is the character i, which it should be, then we can output, <laughs> it worked. So let's find out if it worked. Oh, that's not a good sign. No, it's very unhappy with me. Okay, why are you mad? Invalid read of size 1. I think it's just quite unhappy with me setting up this uh, this pointer. Um, what is this? It sets up the pointer. Hmm. Some very weird things are happening here. I think... So, okay, here's what I think might be happening is I think when I do the ad this address here, some weird nonsense is going on. So out of curiosity, let's actually try and see what happens if, um, if I output what this value is. So let's suppose I want to, you know, we're gonna do some experimenting here. Uh, it could be the case that this was actually not a great exercise, I, and we'll see. So first we're gonna um, do the um, address of my string. Uh, 
and then we'll do the address of my string i. And we'll see what this tells us, because I think that this will uh, will have some weird uh, weird stuff going on. Python tutor is having a bad day today. <laughs> okay, let's see what happens here. So, output. The address of my string is this, and the address of whoa, that's uh, that's not quite what I was looking for. The address of uh, my string i is Eichel. Uh, it's not quite ideal. <laughs> um, so what I what I think is happening here is that um, this isn't actually pointing at what I want it to, uh, because clearly this is. Not really a valid address, is it? So here's what I think I'm going to do is I think what, what may be happening here is that this may be um, doing things in the wrong order. So what I'm going to try doing is what if I do this? Just out of curiosity. Oh, I should have corrected the result as well in case this works, because it might. Hmm, no, it's still very angry and uh, not actually giving me what I'm looking for. Okay, that's all right. What we could do is we can try taking this address and adding to it and see if that does something interesting. So let's try taking this and adding i. And we'll try it for the other one as well. Uh, interesting. No, it's still very unhappy. Um, okay, it could be a case that this is not a good exercise. Um, so what have I asked students to do? Take a string and a character pointer is to return a pointer to the first appearance of my character's pointer in my string. Might not be, uh, might not be something that's harder to do than I thought. Because um, I expected that this would just treat things as an array, but it seems like uh, clearly it doesn't quite work the way I wanted it to. You know what, that's okay. I think this is still a good learning experience because it kind of teaches us this lesson that even though strings are like similar to character arrays, you can't treat them the same way. Um, so I'm actually just going to add a note to this exercise and say, you know what, uh, something's going to go wrong. So, um, so uh, write a function that takes... Uh, And uh, anybody who does this in class, you know, you can, you can try to. Anybody who hasn't watched this video will have to figure out the exact answer. Um, but I think it's fine to have this kind of question um, as an exercise, not as like a test question, um, because this gives us more insight. Uh, and, and you know, even I've learned something today about how C plus plus treats strings and characters. Um, with regards to pointers, and so you know, pointers can be a very tricky topic. Some things, you know, don't always go as we expect. You know, we th I thought that this might work, and it turns out it actually doesn't. Mostly because the computer treats strings as a very special kind of object. It's not the same thing as an array of characters, even though we often think of it to be one. So this sort of um, code doesn't work for a string. But if I were to do something, perhaps this will work. Out of curiosity. Um, what if I do this? Character my string is this, and I make this a character my string. Perhaps this will. I'm actually kind of curious. Uh, let's put these back to what they were before. Um, so that was um, my. So this should work if it was my string plus i. And this should also work if it's my string plus i. Uh, yeah. Let's let's give this a shot. Ah, oh, right. Uh, it doesn't. <laughs> it's not a string anymore. So it's not a length. So we're gonna have to just make this uh, seven because I have seven characters in my name. So 
note that uh, I've done this slightly differently here, where I have um, set up a character array to represent the string, which has M I C H A E L and the end of string character we talked about uh, a while ago, I think, when we first introduced strings. Now, I have my, and see here, here everything is now working okay. So you know what I might actually do is, let's actually change the exercise to not say it won't work, um, but instead to say a, um, ah. should I leave this? What do you, what do we think? Mm. I would ask people in the comments to write something, but I don't know how many people are going to comment on my videos. So, uh, you know, let's let's ponder for a moment. I feel like it's it's I think good to have a working example. Um, so you know what? Instead of saying it won't work, um, hint: try using a character uh, um. Okay, no, it's not, it's not, I don't want to tr um, get published, which one, uh, I want to see if I can shorten this a little bit. We're, we're, you know, editing exercises in the middle of the video, which I think is fine, though. Uh, write a function that takes a string and a character, my pointer has parameters. We can shorten this, I think it's clear that it means parameters. The function returns... Yeah, there we go. So this way, I think it's better because it gives you a chance. If let's suppose you know you didn't have the the secrets that we have covered in this video, um, being able to practice with the string first and seeing that hey, weird things are going on, it's not quite working, um, gives us a bit of insight into you know why is that the case, and then we can see that using the character array will work. And just to complete the character array example, we can see here that my string now points to this character array. The character I'm looking at is this I. And now when I find what I'm looking for, um, my result points to the I right here, which is what I wanted, and it will return that. And so now, uh, still seems to be doing the weird thing there, which is not ideal, but it now returns my result as desired. And hey, we'll output it worked, <laughs> which is nice. So uh, there we go. I think it's uh, good to make sure that we have a way to make it work. Um, but notably, um, we had to change it so it didn't use the string object, but instead use the character array. And this is, I think, kind of important because very often a lot of people will just kind of assume, oh, character array, string, it's the exact same thing. It's definitely not the same thing. There are some uh, parts of this we had to change. Uh, and because of that, um, it's worth knowing the differences between these scenarios. Very complicated uh, example, I think, much more than I thought it would be, but I think it's good to leave up because it covers so much of what can make pointers be very tricky. And I think that if, um, if you haven't watched this video, then this is probably going to be a very tricky problem, but having watched it, my recommendation is go through it again um, and make sure that you can follow the... Um, or go through it by your, on your own again to make sure that you can put the answer together, and then you can always reference the video again if you want to, uh, to see what's going on. So, uh, I'm happy with this now, uh, and then we'll move on to the final exercise, and that'll be it. Okay. So, pointers to pointers. Uh, take a function that takes an array of pointers and a pointer to a pointer, and points the pointer to a pointer to the element of the array, which is pointed at the space in memory with the highest numerical address. Woof! What a question. Okay. Let's break this down. Our function is going to take an array of pointers. That's already something that we should start with because that's going to be tricky on its own. So what we're going to need is we're going to need to build an array of pointers. Uh, what I think we'll do is we'll keep this simple and have each of them point to uh, some numbers. We'll have maybe just like a couple of numbers, you know, int num1 is 10, int num2 is 20, int num3 is 30, just so we have some numbers. Uh, we're going to make an array of pointers, so we're going to have um, an int star my array, which will have, let's say, four pointers just for fun. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll have my array four or my array zero. We'll have the address of number one. Oops, my array. One, two, 
Uh, this one will have the address of number three, this one will have two, and this one will have one again, just so they're kind of shuffled around. Okay, so these are all pointing to different things now. So I got my array of pointers, and I'm going to pass it to a function. Uh, and the other thing it's going to take is a pointer to a pointer, and it's going to point that to the element of the array which has uh, the highest numerical address. In other words, this actually just means that it has the highest value. Um, because remember that the value of a pointer is the address it's looking at. So whichever has the highest value is the highest address. So it's actually, the question sounds harder than it is, I think. Now, um, I need a function. My function doesn't return anything, so it is void. And it's going to do the highest pointer thingy. Uh, it's going to take an int star array. And it's going to take a, point, a pointer to a pointer call that pointer. And we're going to call this, we're going to make a pointer, and we're going to call a highest pointer with my array and with pointer. Okay, there we go. Now, I need to find the highest value, so that's actually not too hard. Um, we'll iterate through, i is 0, i is less than 4, i plus plus, Um, we'll start, actually we'll start with one and we'll set up our pointer to initially point at array of zero. So remember, array of zero, what does this mean? This means that this is the first of the pointers. We have four of them set up here that all point at different things and we're going to make our, uh, let's call this something other than pointer, it's too vague. Um, let's try um, high pointer. Because this is supposed to be the thing that's going to point to the highest address. High pointer. It's going to start off by, by taking the, um, the highest address, assuming it's the first one. And now maybe it's not. If it's not, then we're going to have to change it. So if the um, array of i is higher than the high pointer, then that should be our new value. High pointer equals array i. Then we'll return. Uh, we don't return anything because that's it. We're to be done. Okay. Now let's see what happens. So um, we also just for fun should output the addresses of each of these. So the address of num one is address of num one. We'll do the same thing for two and three. Just so we can see what they are. Oh, uh, I made a mistake here. Um, oh yes, uh, it's not supposed to have the value, it's supposed to point to the value. So it takes the address, so it's going to point to the pointer with the highest value. Uh, and then if that value is higher than what's at the high pointer, then we're going to take the new address. There we go. So. Let me recap exactly what we're doing in this function. So what we want is to point our high pointer to the element of the array which has the highest address. Now, each of the values of this array are addresses. They're the addresses that are being pointed to by our array of pointers. We'll start off by assuming the highest one is the first one. Why not? It could be. If it's not, then we're going to have to change it. Now, to make our high pointer point at that first element, I need its address. And that is the thing itself. So array zero, grab its address with the ampersand address of operator. We'll go through the rest of them. If we find that the value, the address that is being pointed to by the next element of the array is higher than what we have, and what we have is what's being pointed to by our high pointer, then we need to update. And to update, we take our high pointer and give it a new address, which is the address of whatever was higher. And at the end of this, it should point at the highest one. So let's see if that works. Okay, so 10, 20, 30. And we're going to point 
uh, so the address of number one is that, and then two and three. So we can see here that the highest address is going to be number three, BB4. That's bigger than BB0, and it's bigger than BAC. Uh, just like in normal mathematics, everything is um, everything on the left is more significant. So B is bigger than A. So as soon as you see that it's B, it doesn't matter what comes after it, the, the B takes dominance. So that means that FFF BB4 is our biggest address, and we want to make sure at the end our high pointer should point to a pointer that points to number three. It turns out we only have one, it's my array one. So we'll set up all of our pointers. So boop, 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 boop. So now we have my array zero points to the first one, and this points to three, this points to two, this points also to the first one, and now we're going to run our function. So our function takes this array, we have a pointer to that array. We start off by assuming our high pointer, the, the highest one is the, the first one, which it's not, but we're going to update it. We look at the next one, we see, is the value of this pointer, which is the address of number three, that is its value, is that higher than the address of number one? So remember, if we take our high pointer and we follow this arrow, where does it lead us to? It leads us to another arrow. It leads us to this um, red arrow, which is pointing at number one. So the value of my array zero is the address of number one. That's the lowest address, so it's not high enough. So we want to uh, update our high pointer to point to the next thing. Now it points to the next thing. Okay, now we repeat this again, but is anything gonna happen from this point? High pointer, points to this pointer, uh, which is my array um, one, which points to the highest address that we have among all of our numbers, which means at no point now should any of this be updated. Well, my arrows are disappearing. Come back, there we go. So none of the rest of this will do anything. And at the end, I have my high pointer, which points to, um, oops, which points to here. Now. Uh, note what happened at the very end, and this is a mistake that I made which I need to correct, is that because I passed high pointer as a value and not as a reference, when I changed this, I didn't change this. And that's not what I necessarily wanted to do. So to fix that, I need to pass this by reference. Now this is like very easy to get confused with. Am I passing? a pointer to high pointer? Let's see. Whoop. I am. At least I'm trying to, but it's unfortunate letting me. Actually no, this this I put this in the wrong spot. This should be over uh this should be over here, I think, right? Whoop. Actually this might not even let me do it. Let's find out. Oh there we go. I think that's quite right. When we get to our function, there we go. Okay, so <laughs> we got arrows following, arrows following, arrows at this point. Uh, and this is why I put this exercise in, because it is the trickiest one, but it's worth knowing how to track everything that's going on here. My high pointer in my first example that I just ran through um, was a value that I passed to my function. And when I change that, when you change a value in a function, it doesn't get changed anywhere else. Um, which means that after I ran through everything, my original high pointer doesn't actually get modified. If I want to modify something in a function, I must pass by reference. So I have this wacky looking parameter up here, int star star ampersand high pointer. Holy moly, what's going on? Int star star means that high pointer is supposed to point to integer pointers. So I got my integer pointers in my array, the zero, the one, the two, and the three. Um, int star star means something that points to that, okay? Ampersand high pointer in this case means I want to pass this value as a reference. In other words, I'm passing a pointer to my main function's high pointer. So this is why I have this crazy chain right here of high pointer in my function is a reference, because I could do a call by reference, to the high pointer in my main function, which is going to start off pointing at my array at zero. Come back. Come back, arrows. They always seem to be disappearing on me. I'm not quite sure why. There we go. 
Um, and as I change the value of high pointer, it's not going to change this arrow, the, the big one from the function. It's going to change this little arrow down here. And so now when I shift, you can see the first thing that's going to change is this arrow. And it won't change again. And that way when I finish my function, I'm now actually left with my high pointer pointing where I want it to. This is not a good example, I think, to learn from without doing it. I strongly recommend, if you haven't already, work through this again. Make sure that you understand the steps that are going through. Try using a different array of pointers. Try changing some things so you can see exactly what's going on here, because this is not an easy thing to learn just from watching. There are way too many like arrows going all over the place here for you to get a good grasp of it without having the chance to actually work with Python Tutor, play around with the different values here, make the arrows point where you want them to, and so on. So, although I think this is a good question, I do think it's the kind of question that you learn the most from if you try it yourself, so please do. Okay, and that concludes the exercises for pointers. Hopefully this was a helpful video, and I will see you guys in class. Take care.